Hello boys and girls of grade 5 and welcome to another English language lesson. Today, we will be continuing with subject and verb agreement, where we will learn more about rules that will assist us to ensure that our concord is on point. At our last class, we looked at five rules. So in today's lesson, we will be continuing from rule six. So let's get started. Rule number six. It states here, some nouns joined by and are actually singular. Before I delve further into this rule, I must remind you that in our last lesson, we looked at something called compound subjects. Those were subjects that were joined by the word and. And usually they were identifying more than one subject and so a plural verb was needed. But here, some nouns are joined by and, but instead of being plural, they are actually singular because they are considered as one thing because they go together. These nouns or subjects must take a singular verb. Let's take a look at some examples to make this rule clearer. Our first example says, bread and butter is eaten at breakfast time. We have bread and butter is. Usually, we might want to say that we are talking about bread and butter, which are two subjects. But in essence, Bread and butter is considered as one thing since they go together. Remember, it's as if we're making a sandwich. The bread is not eaten separately from the butter since the butter is placed on the bread. Because of this, bread and butter, boys and girls, is considered one item. And so a singular verb is is used. Let's look at another example. Roti and curry is a delicious meal. Again, even though we have the words roti and curry being joined by the word and, we make use of a singular verb is because roti and curry are usually seen as one item. So let's move on. Rule seven. Some nouns, which appear to be plural because they end with S, are actually singular and must take a singular verb also. In our last lesson, boys and girls, we learned that plural nouns usually end in S. However, it's the opposite for verbs, since the verbs ending in S are actually singular. So here we're being told that some nouns that end in S are really not plural, but actually are singular and must take a singular verb. Let's take a look at the first example. Measles is an infectious disease. The subject of our sentence is measles. However, because measles ends in S, it may appear that we are referring to a plural subject, but this is not the case. And so we say measles is. Also, social studies is my favorite subject. The subject of this sentence is social studies. The word social studies ends in S. However, it is not a plural noun. 
It only appears that way because it ends in S. Because of that, boys and girls, we do not use social studies are, but we say social studies is. Further, let's look at another example. News provides us with information. Boys and girls of grade five, can you tell me which word in that sentence appears to be plural, but it's actually singular? Yes, news, since news ends in S. However, news is not plural, but it's actually referring to one thing, and so we use the singular verb provides. On the other hand, words such as scissors, pants, glasses, pliers, and shears are usually followed by plural verbs. For example, we might say the scissors are on the table. Let's move on. We are now at rule eight. When sentences start with there or here, the subject will always be placed after the verb. Therefore, you must determine if the subject is singular or plural in order to choose the correct verb. So boys and girls, let's look at two examples to make sense of this rule. Firstly, there something eggs on the table. We are told that if our sentence begins with there, we have to look for the subject that comes after the verb. The word coming after the verb is eggs. Eggs is plural and therefore we must make use of a plural verb. So if we have to choose between is and are, we would say there are eggs on the table. Secondly, here's something, the shopping list you wrote. The rule tells us that if the sentence begins with here, we must examine the subject that comes after the verb. Let's look at the word coming after the missing word. The shopping list. Therefore, we're only referring to one list. Boys and girls, since the subject here is singular, our sentence being grammatically correct would read, here is the shopping list you wrote. So let's try to apply our knowledge on rules six, seven, and eight in this exercise. Remember, some nouns that are joined by and are really singular because they go together. Also, some nouns only appear to be plural because they end in S, but actually they are singular. And just now, we looked at the rule which stated that when a sentence begins with there or here, we must look for the subject that comes after the verb in choosing the correct verb. So let's look at the first sentence in this exercise. It states, molasses something sold in bottles. Our options are is and are. subject of the sentence, boys and girls? Yes, it is molasses. Remember, molasses was one of the examples 
of a word that is singular but only appears to be plural because it ends in s. We were told that we must make use of a singular verb for these sentences or subjects. So, boys and girls, the best option here would be is. Molasses is sold in bottles. Let's move on. There are something pages on the table to be copied. Our options are is and are. Do ensure that you take a look at the first word in this sentence so that you can apply the correct rule. sentence the first word is there and we were told at rule 8 that if a sentence begins with the word there we must check the subject that comes after the verb in order to choose the correct verb so let's take a look at the word that comes after the missing space pages pages is plural therefore we must choose the plural verb also. So, boys and girls, the correct sentence would read, There are pages on the table to be copied. Number three. Here's something, the information you requested. Our options are is or are. What would be the correct answer, boys and girls? Yes, definitely, is, because the word coming after here is information, and information is usually seen as one unit. So, our sentence should read, here is the information you requested. Number four, fish and chips, something, a popular meal. Our options are, is, and are. Which of the rules would you apply? And what would be your answer? Definitely, we would apply Rule 6, which states that some subjects joined by the word and are actually singular because they go together. Fish and chips is one of those. And so, our answer would be, fish and chips is a popular meal. Number 5. Mathematics, something my favorite subject in school. Our options are was or were.
mathematics ends in S and it only appears to be plural, then we will choose the singular verb. Our answer would then read, mathematics was my favorite subject in school. I hope you're understanding our rules so far. So let's move on to rule nine. It states here that the expressions all but or all except take a plural verb. So boys and girls, if we see the words all and we see a subject in between followed by the word but or we see all with a subject followed by the word except, we must make use of a plural verb. Let's look at some examples. All except Harry are present today. We chose are because this sentence has the expression all except. What this sentence really implies is that everyone, which is the subject of the sentence, except one person, Harry, was not present at the function on that particular day. So, because of that, we make use of a plural verb. Let's look at another example. All of the girls but Annie have seen that movie before. We use a plural verb have because we have the expression all but coming within this sentence. Let's move on. Rule 10. This rule states that the expressions below use a singular or plural verb depending on whether the subject coming after the phrase is a countable or uncountable noun. We're told that if the subject is countable, then we make use of a plural verb. But when it is uncountable, the verb must be singular. But what are countable and uncountable nouns? A countable one is one that can be counted. For example, we can say one, two, three, four. Another way in which we can identify countable nouns is that they usually have both a singular and plural form. For example, we can say one goat or we can say 10 goats, singular, plural. Therefore, goat or goats is a countable noun. On the other hand, however, uncountable nouns cannot be counted since they can only be found in one form. Some examples of uncountable nouns include rice, sugar, salt, food, milk, sand, hair, sunshine, or sleep. No one says one sugar, two sugars. And so sugar, rice, etc. are examples of nouns that cannot be counted and are usually only found in one form. So boys and girls, what are some of the expressions that we must look out for in order to apply this rule? Some of these expressions are most of, many of, a lot of, a little, some, some of, much, and any. So when we see these expressions, we must look at the noun after to check if it's countable or uncountable before we decide which verb we will use. So let's look at an exercise to apply this rule. Number one, most of the water, something in the oceans. 
our options are end and ends. We have the expression most of. What noun follows most of? Is it countable or uncountable? Water. What do you think? boys and girls, water is an uncountable noun. And we were told that if the noun or subject is uncountable, we must make use of a singular verb. And so the sentence would read, most of the water ends in the oceans. Let's look at another. Some of the ink, something spilled on the floor. Our options are was and were. We can see from the beginning of this sentence that it includes the expression some of. So let's take a look at the noun coming after that expression. Is it countable or uncountable? count ink? Definitely. No. And so ink is an uncountable noun and we must make use of a singular verb. Our answer will therefore be some of the ink was spilled on the floor. Number three. Here we must make use of rule nine. It reads all but Christy, something to school. Options are ride or rides. we have the expressions all but or all except we must make use of a plural verb and so boys and girls our answer for this sentence should be ride all but Christy ride to school and lastly all of the family except Jean something or grandparents regularly. Our options are visit or visits. What then would be your answer? Yes, if you chose visit, then you are on point because the expression all except takes a plural verb. So the sentence would read, all of the family except Jean visit or grandparents regularly. Let's move on. Rule 11. 
The following words and expressions are singular, and as such, they must always take a singular verb. Do not be misled, boys and girls, by what comes after these expressions. In most cases, these words are referred to as indefinite nouns or subjects. Again, these words take only singular verbs. So, what are these expressions? They are each, every, everyone, everyone of, everybody, anyone, anyone of, anybody, somebody, someone, nobody, no one, none of, one of, not one of, or each of. So, boys and girls, it is important for you to commit to memory these indefinite subjects, since at Rule 11, we are told that they always take a singular verb. Let's look at the examples. Each of the girls dances well. Sometimes, we might be misled to say this sentence is talking about a plural subject since we're seeing the word girls. But remember that expressions such as each of must take a singular verb. So we say each of the girls dances well. Another example, everyone does their homework. Remember, an expression such as everyone, everybody, etc. takes a singular verb. So we say everyone does their homework. So let's apply our knowledge of rule 11 to this exercise. Remember, do not be misled by the word coming after the expression. You must focus on the indefinite word. So let's go. Number one, nobody something to go with her. Our options are want or wants. falls within the category of indefinite words. And so, boys and girls, your choice should be, yes, wants, since wants is the singular verb. So we might say, nobody wants to go with her. Let's move on. Every one of the boys, something absent, was or were. One of is an indefinite phrase, and so we must make use of a singular verb. Our sentence would read, every one of the boys was absent. Let's go on. Each of us something the right to tell the truth. We have, has, or have.
equal choose has because each of is an indefinite phrase. So our answer would read, each of us has the right to tell the truth. And lastly, one of the persons something given a ticket for reckless driving. Our options are was and were. The expression at the beginning of this sentence is an indefinite one, one of. So boys and girls, we must make use of a singular verb. So our answer would be, one of the persons was given a ticket for reckless driving. Let's take a look at our final rule for this lesson, rule 12, and it states, Words denoting sums of money, fractions or fractional parts, percentages, lengths, weights, which refer to measurement, months and weeks, which refer to periods of time, always use a singular verb. Examples of these might include money, $1,000. Fractions, one third. Percentages, 80%. Lengths, 100 centimeters. Weights, 10 kilograms. Months, six months. Or weeks, five weeks. And so, boys and girls, we must remember that if our sentence refers to any of those listed, we must make use of a singular verb. Let's take a closer look at this rule by looking at these examples. Number one, $20 is all I have. The subject of this sentence refers to a sum of money and therefore, we must use a singular verb. So we say, $20 is. Also, five weeks is a long time to wait. The subject of this sentence refers to a period of time. And so, again, we make use of a singular verb. Five weeks is. Further, one-fifth of the country is unemployed. The subject of this sentence refers to a fraction or fractional part. One-fifth. And so, we must make use of a singular verb. So we say, one-fifth of the country is. And lastly, 50 kilometers was the distance of our journey. The subject of this sentence refers to measurement, 50 kilometers. And so, we must make use of a singular verb. So we say, 50 kilometers was. So let's try to apply our knowledge on rule 12 to this exercise. Number one, 50 years, something, a long time to wait. Our options are is or are.
look at the subject of this sentence, 50 years, it refers to a period of time. We were told at rule 12 that if the subject is a period of time, then our verb must be singular. And so, boys and girls, our better option would be to choose is. So, our answer would read, 50 years is a long time to wait. Number two, $2,000 something found on the pavement. Our options are was or were. Again, $2,000 refers to a sum of money, and we must make use of singular verbs when referring to such subjects. So, our answer would be $2,000 was found on the pavement. Number three, one third of my family something a vehicle. Our options are own and owns. The subject of this sentence denotes a fraction. And so, again, we must make use of a singular verb. So, boys and girls, what then would be your answer? Yes, our answer would be owns. One third of my family owns a vehicle. And lastly, 10 kilograms something the weight of the potatoes is or are. What is your answer? answer would be is 10 kilograms is the weight of the potatoes so boys and girls we looked at quite a number of rules in subject and verb agreement today i hope that we can now apply these rules in our speech and writing be sure to practice as much as you can in order to cement your understanding of the concepts. Remember, practice makes perfect. However, I'll now leave you to continue to work diligently as you strive to be excellent English language pupils. Do stay well until we meet again for our next lesson where we will continue to look at subject and verb agreement.